Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to user one productions. My name is David and in today's quick unity tutorial We'll be talking about a starting screen for your game You guys can manipulate this any sort of way that you would possibly need for your game whether it's a black screen at the start and it says some text like my game does or it could just make a little fade into the screen so the screen starts black and then after two seconds it fades into the actual scene. Let me actually show you what we're going to be making today and then we'll go into the tutorial. So here I am in my editor in my game so let's uh, press play and see what happens here. As you can see we have the date, time, and where we're at. We cannot move until it's gone and then we are in the game. Pretty much that's what we're going to be making so far. Uh, I don't want to show off this game a little too much because it's still very in early access and I'm still working on it a lot. But let me load into a new Unity scene and we'll start this off. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure you have the standard assets imported from Unity. If you don't already have that you can either go to the asset store and grab it or package manager and grab it. What I'll start off right away with is creating a cube on the ground and then upping its scale to something we could play around with uh, like 25 by 25. Move the screen down a little bit. Next, we're just going to delete the actual main camera that comes with the scene because we don't need it. Uh, we will be using the standard asset, first person character. So let's pull him in real quick, just like this. And we'll turn gizmos on, make sure he's not sticking through the ground. And now we have a character, okay? So what I'm going to do is inside of our FPS controller, I'm going to right click and create a UI canvas. And I'm just going to call this uh, starting screen just like that okay after that we want to go into that canvas we just created and go to canvas scaler make sure you have it scale with screen and the size is going to be 1920 by 1080 if I could type that correctly that'd be great 1080 the reason we use 1920 by 1080 is because this is a pretty modern monitor size and this is easy to scale down for smaller monitors or bigger monitors so we will just keep that like this then in that canvas we're going to right click go UI and we're going to do a raw image and the width is 1920 by 1080 and now if you look at the game screen it is completely white. We could change the color. I'm going to change to black for tutorial reasons and I'm just going to rename this background. It's good to keep this panel organized because we're going to be animating and we want to make sure we're animating the correct things. From here I'm going to right click that starting screen go UI and I'm going to do a text. I'm going to change the font size to something bigger so we can see it, more like 32. We'll have to change the width and height so that way it actually shows up on screen. So I'll do 200 by 75 and then our text reappears over here. I'm going to change the text to a white for right now and then make sure it's centered in the alignment and then you could type whatever you want in here. Depending what you type in here you might have to change the width so I'm actually going to change it to a thousand real quick and then you can see remember to like, share, and subscribe. So obviously if you guys haven't done that already, please do that right now. I'm not going to rename the text because this is going to be the only text component in here. So I'll just keep it like that. But now we're actually going to have to go to the animation tab and actually create an animation for it. Make sure you press the starting screen, the canvas that we created, and then press create. And I'm just going to call this example, Annie. We will go here to add property. We want to right click on rec transform and then add properties going to add us two keyframes in uh, one at zero and one at the one second mark and in our game view I'm actually gonna just scroll out and uh, check it out up here so I can see it while animating it now that we are here I want to go to the first frame press record and in the background I want to just change the color to anything change it back to black at the end and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the text and what that did was it gave us two more keyframes down here for the background color and our text color. Pretty much so it knows that we are going to be using them and if we were to change it when it's down here it would not uh, animate properly. From there we can actually delete this first keyframe from the animation. And at the beginning I want my text to start black so that way it kind of can fade into the screen. So then I'm going to scroll over to the one second mark and I will make that color back to white. And then if we play that animation real quick, you could see the text goes to white over a one second period. And then at the two second period, I'm going to change the color back down to black so it fades with this screen. And then we can actually deactivate it right here. So that way the text component is no longer available. 
At the two second mark, we want to make another keyframe stating that this color stays black. So let's go back to background, change its color to something like red, and change it back to black. And that'll just ensure we have a keyframe there for when it's black. And then next, I'm going to go to the three second mark, and background is just going to become transparent. You could do that with this slider down here. And then the keyframe right afterwards, we can actually just deactivate it. Uh, this part is not completely necessary, but I like to do it just in case it tries to pop up later on. Now, if you didn't want any text, you can just simply make the screen fade out. And as you can see, we're actually having a glitch right now where it's fading out when we don't want it to. So each keyframe that I've made, the one second and two second mark, I'm going to scroll in a little bit so we know where we're at. Uh, and then I'm just going to change the color to black. Oh, my mistake. We want to make sure... The transparency is not there and then we don't want the transparency at the two second mark either uh animating with unity is kind of weird sometimes where you have to do this over and over again but now if we play the animation the text comes active fades out and then our screen starts to disappear we can stop animating now and we want to locate that animation we just made so in my example annie we want to change loop time we want to make sure that's off Okay, so now if I go to the game tab, press play, it says remember to like and share and subscribe, and then our game scene comes active. But, we have a problem right now. So if I go down to my character real quick, and then we press play, you can see I can actually still move when that screen is up, and we don't want that. So, what I'm actually going to do, is I'm going to go here, and add an empty game object. I'm just going to call this map logic. I like to have this object for things that need to pop up around the scene or if we need to enable or disable something within our scene. And now since we have the scene set up, we can actually add the starting screen uh, script to our starting screen object. Remember you guys, scripts, models, sound effects, everything that I create in this series will be up for a free download in the description on a Google Drive. Something else in the description you'll find is our Discord server with over 130 talented game developers that can help you with questions or just be a friend to talk to. Something else in the description is going to be my Twitch channel. It is a separate channel from me doing these tutorials and I actually play video games on there every so often. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. Before I actually add this script, let's just go over it real quick so you can see what's going on in here. It's a very short script. Um, obviously this script will become much bigger with the more uh, map logic you need to add in. But for starting a start screen, this is all you need. So let's go over it. We have a private game object player, a public game object starting screen. So obviously starting screen is going to be the canvas we made and it's going to auto identify the player because in my start function, I have player find with tag player. So we got to make sure to actually tag him with the player tag. Also on the start, we want to make sure our starting screen is set active. And then we want to make sure that that player is not able to move. That's why we set his first person controller to false. After this, we're going to start a coroutine. The reason we're going to start this code routine is because I need this yield return new wait for seconds. So what this is going to do is allow us to put a number in for how long our animation is and that's how long our player cannot move for. Right after the wait time, our starting screen becomes false, which actually I'm just going to tag this out uh, because we don't necessarily need this. If you want to deactivate it in your game uh, by doing this, you can actually just delete these two crosses and it'll work. But for this specific case, because we have the animation starting and then auto deactivating it we won't need this and then right after the wait time the player can be used that's why it's enabled right here all right so let's go back in the unity we'll put starting screen onto starting screen actually i lied we're gonna put that onto map logic because this is gonna be our main object for uh doing different things around the scene and it's just a very useful little item to have instead of having all these different scripts on different objects. So in here, we have to state what the starting screen is, which you just put the canvas in, and then our wait time. We're gonna figure that out by looking at the animation, seeing the animation ends at the three second mark. So since it's three seconds, we wanna make sure wait time is three. Okay, so let me actually deactivate starting screen to show you that you could still work in your scene here, but as soon as you go to play it, it's gonna auto turn it on and our player's moving. The one thing I said we were not going to miss, I missed. Make sure your character has been tagged with player, okay? And now our player won't move 
until that screen disappears after the three seconds. I will full screen that real quick and I'll show you it in real time. Cannot move until that screen has disappeared. Very nice. And that's going to be just about it, my friends. Uh, it was a very quick tutorial. I hope you guys find it useful. And like I said, everything you can find throughout this series, including the script, is linked on a Google Drive in the description. Something else in the description is our Discord with over 130 talented game developers that can help you with questions or concerns you might have. And also, I just add a lot of um, announcements for the channel and stuff like that. And finally, don't forget to follow the Twitch channel. And until next time, guys, this is User1 Productions signing off for now. Peace.